Hi, uh, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at Bournemouth 2 and Manchester United 2, the match that has just finished, well, about half an hour ago it finished. And we're going to be going for that player ratings match discussion. So everybody get involved because the viewers' votes and the votes of G Wolf and myself will be counted and we'll go through that pretty shortly. But G Wolf, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Yo, I'm doing good. Um, I had a bit of a uh, blip on my uh, on my end. Um, sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, I watched the uh, remainder of the match or what I could, and to tell you the truth, it was really dire and disappointing. What were you expecting beforehand? Because I know you said you thought like a four-one win. Well, I was. I actually said it was going to be a three-one win. Um, but it just didn't materialize it, it, like, you know, the, um, the, the bit of masterclass was that he, uh, left Bruno on the pitch for the whole match. There you go. That was his master. That was his masterclass. Um, got us, got us back to uh, level on level terms, but. To tell you the truth, the whole performance was a bit dreadful. I think the pitch didn't help. I thought it was too water. I thought the pitch was waterlogged, um, which benefited uh, Bournemouth rather than United, which you can quite clearly see it did. Um, as I say, I just think there was too many, uh, too many reckless challenges as well and um, piss poor defending at the same time uh, yeah do you, do you blame individual defenders for that do you blame the system do you blame the manager do you blame um that? Where, where do you how do you attribute blame to you off do you look at individual players on the pitch and think they've made mistakes or do you think the way we're playing is not helping overall the uh, overall it, it's the players it's not the manager the manager can like you know give like you know direct instructions to the players if, but if the players are not doing what what the uh, ma what the manager is telling them, then at the end of the day, or or the um, players are not on the same wavelength as the manager, then uh, at the end of the day, I I blame the uh, I blame the players. I think um, too many people are not uh, covering. Like, you know, they like, especially um, Kemba Waller, he's still young. He's only 19. He's only just come into the team. And there was no protection for him for when uh, we, for when he got done for the, uh, there was no protection for him for the first goal. That was all down to him, but he'll learn from that. The second one, I thought, again, he got done, but I thought it's also Dallo. He could have tracked the one hour as well. Just want to say welcome to people. Hi, Kate Cadet. Hi, Box. I was going to say to Kate Cadet, we're actually planning a, a Ten Hag debate podcast, which G Wolf will be representing the the people that, as you put it, have been indoctrinated into the philo philosophy of Ten Hag. But also, we will have people that are more skeptical and maybe some neutrals as well. So we'll we'll be looking at both sides. That Anana for me two shots that he doesn't really get close to either of them. I'm just wondering whether you actually see him save many of these shots in games. There's a, but I know George is a fan. He'll say he kept us in it. But um, Kate Cadet is really not impressed and Box not impressed. So it definitely divides opinions on that. But what do you think? Like, do you think he's responsible for the, any of the goals? Um, I don't think he was responsible. Maybe he could react. Think she either start? I think he could have reacted a bit quicker, but overall, it was it, it shouldn't have gotten to a point where it shouldn't have even got to a point where Nana had to save the shot. Should have been um, blocked well beforehand before the move. I thought it's, so, it's not a tap in, is it? It's a shot from distance. It's not a shot, shot, yeah. But the only thing is, yeah, right. The first one you could say that it was a nana. Second one, 
tell you the truth, you could have said you could have said that one of the defenders, either um, Campbell Waller or uh, Dallo, could have got could have got something on it, even directed it for a corner. Do you know what I mean? So, but I think it, out of both of them, they were at fault for the second one. First one, like you know, could uh, could Anana save? Could have done better, yes, but. He didn't obviously, and we went two 0 We went down two one. Yeah, Box is saying if David De Gea let those in, we'd be slating him. Then I guess a Manchester United goalkeeper, you're going to get criticism every time we can see goals. I, mean, I was looking at the marks. We got a one from Box. We have a two from Kate Cadet. I don't know if George is going to say he's probably going to give him a good mark, but um. I'm going to give Onano a five. I'm not going to, like, slate him. Yeah, okay. It was, uh, as I said, he could have done better for the uh, first goal. Second goal, I think it was, um, as I say, it was... But even the first goal was a defensive error. If you if you think about it, if Kemperwala stayed on his feet, there's no way that that shot would have gone in. But the second one, um, Kemba Wallow, he got wrong footed, he got twist and turned, he got put on his ass. But Dallow was know, the covering I know, man. I get what you're saying, but I think with like the goalkeeper, is that when David De Gea is making saves or Schmeichel or Van der Sar, when goalkeepers are making saves, it's because we've conceded chances. But I just don't, I think Anana could have done better with those two shots today. Mm. That's my view. I think I, that's. So that's George is giving them a seven. I think that's very generous, given the, the game. As I say, I'm giving it. I, I, I'm giving him a five. I thought, like you know, it was pretty standard performance from everybody. In all fairness, none of them should be getting a high score. Yeah, true. Niall, what do you reckon, Niall? If you want to vote for Anana and JR, I'll take them into consideration. At the moment, we've got a seven, a five, a one and a two. So that's an average of about four. I'll probably give them about four. See, I think so, uh, everyone is saying there, right, there's two points dropped. See, I don't see it as that. I, I see I don't it know. as I one point you gotta, gained. you got to say it's two points dropped against Bournemouth. Come on. Nah, we know how good Bournemouth have been recently. Hang, hang on a minute. Before before we go on to Dallow, hang on a minute. We can't go to Bournemouth, get a draw, and say it's one point gained in a race for top. Considering four. that we, considering yeah, why that we didn't get no points at Old Trafford. But it's Bournemouth. But we saw how good they were against us in the first in the first leg. Second leg, they absolute they were absolutely don't forget the pitch was absolutely dreadful. Absolutely perfect for Bournemouth, absolutely dreadful for us. Okay. But in the in the preview you said an easy three one win. So you must be disappointed that we we scraped the two two draw. I am disappointed that we uh that we uh drew. But to the truth. I would still say I would still say that it was I didn't say it was an easy. I didn't say it was gonna be easy three one. I just said that it was gonna be three one, George. I said I'd be disappointed if it wasn't a straight if we didn't score a few goals and win this game, I'd be disappointed. So I'm really disappointed by Manchester United today. The fact that I watched the game in the first half, okay, the pitch was like watered like Derby in the 70s, you know, when they were trying to make it difficult for Inter Milan in, in Europe. They watered the crap out of the pitch. But that doesn't excuse really shit midfield play, disappointing defending. So. Yeah, but he, the, the person who was proper poor was Kimber Walla. Jay Godalo for you, okay? He didn't have his best game, like a lot of them. Dallo, I'm going to give a four. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to give Dallo a three. Um, simple reason is, you know, why that he should have, he should have helped out Kemba Walla. 
um, a lot more. Um, he wasn't there. He didn't cover. Uh, he was just piss poor defensively, um, just like most of the others. But yeah, three for Dallo from me. Yeah, George says, shit from start to finish as usual. I think he's been disappointing recently, but it's, oh uh, yeah, just not had a good, good. And you also like Kemba Wiley, you think it just, you want the ex more experienced players to help him out. If anything, he's liability a lot of the time. A lot of threes. Do you think he's like, I, I was thinking a lot of people have been saying he's one of the most reliable players this season, but he's, is he good enough to be Manchester United right back? No. Oh, hell no, he ain't. We need to do better. We need to get a better uh, right back. Tell you the truth, so even the... probably Amas could have done uh, could have done better. Like, you know, if we take off um, Dallo, put in uh, Wan-Bissaka at right back and then put Amas back at left back, might have done yeah, a bit might better. Be a bit... It might be a bit um, early, but I can see why you'd say that. In the future, certainly. Uh, Maguire today. Uh, Maguire, five. Um, I didn't see much from him, really. He um, did a couple of good... He did a um, couple of long balls. Went a bit wayward for my liking. Um, yeah, just standard five. On this game, though, my box says best defender today. Do you agree with that? Conceding two goals, and you think that he was the best defender? The yeah. best defender of Manchester United's team. The whole team conceded two goals, but <laughs> Kambawala, Wambasaka, Dallow, Maguire, who was the best player today? Uh, none. To me, none of them. Literally, you don't, like you know, you can't go to Bournemouth and then concede two goals. At the end of the day, it shouldn't happen. And like you know, defensive errors. Maguire made defensive errors. Kembalwala made defensive errors. Dallo was absolutely piss poor, and so was Wampasaka. So literally, all the defenders are getting literally no more than a five. Kate Cadet's kind of agreeing, but he's saying that whole back line deserve three out of ten today, which is yeah, not great. When you think that when if a, a Bournemouth player, and we've seen this with every team we play against, if they can receive the ball in the middle of the pitch under no pressure, then turn, then run 20 yards towards Manchester United with no pressure whatsoever, there's something wrong, isn't there? And you put that on the manager the way we're set up. There's a massive gap in midfield. You wouldn't blame that on the manager, though. You can't blame the players. The players are there to do a job. And if they're not there, marking... Like, you know, we, it's like... um, What was it? I was... what Like, if you watch the Liverpool match, yeah? If you watch the Liverpool match on Thursday... You would have seen that they man marked, and they still managed to get the um ball back within. What like you know, if teams like that can do that to Liverpool, then surely Manchester United can do that with um like you know can just man mark. But you know the players have got to take responsibility. It can't be just on the manager. Oh. Uh no winning seven. He's doing his best to not to be manager. So we've gone with a five based on um, what people are saying. Um, yeah, bang average. Kambuala, I know we were full of praise last time, but a lot better performance against Liverpool. Well, that's actually really frustrating for me, G Wolf. We play against Liverpool, and you see the performance we put in against Liverpool in the FA Cup, in the league twice. Why wouldn't we go to Bournemouth, who are a much worse team? We're, at one point, no one could control the ball. No one could pass. It was just a complete disaster. But again, I, I see, I would blame the pitch. I think the way that Bournemouth, like, you know, the way that Bournemouth had it, like, you know, waterlogging the pitch, 
like I don't know. I just think it suited them more than it did us, and basically we got it all wrong. I don't think we knew. I don't think the players knew how uh, how the pitch was going to be until they got went on there in the uh, uh, you know when they started the game um, because of uh, they water, they they literally waterlogged the pitch about five minutes before kickoff i believe because of um when they did the uh when they initially did the uh walk round to inspect the pitch the pitch was okay and then afterwards after they'd done the inspection they water they watered it and they absolutely drenched it apparently um the commentators were saying that it was like it's been absolutely pissing it down for half that for half the game already so that's how waterlogged the pitch was and you can quite clearly see every pass like the water was coming off of the um turf like no tomorrow well, well, Campbell uh, obviously struggled today as a lot of the, the team did and JL says like four I think with Campbell he's probably just going to learn a lot from playing regular football and he is it's going to be there's going to be good days, bad days. I think with as a defensive player, your bad days are often going to be punctuated by lapses in defence and Manchester United conceding goals. So it's going to be a lot more noticeable in a striker having a poor game. It doesn't really have the same impact. And I'm just, just looking through the comments that it certainly didn't really help at all the players playing alongside him having poor games. The, I would say particularly the midfields in front of him and Dallas to the side of him. McCake said he's poor, but he'll learn and he's young. I'm not really a but the pitch wasn't great, but that doesn't that doesn't affect your tactical awareness. That doesn't affect your positioning. That can affect touches in some points, but you know I need to be a lot better than this. Um, I don't know what G Will thinks about your nickname, George. He's not player of the season what for was me. His, what was his nickname, George? Yeah, I'm for like you know. Unfortunately, Kemba Walla, I'll give him a four. Um, he was pretty bang average compared to what he was like against Liverpool. But he's still got age on it. He's still got age on his sign on his side, and he will learn from. He would learn from, for learn from this definitely. Um, he just needs to put out a better performance. We, but to the truth, he did. He did a couple of good tackles as well, which I was quite intrigued. Like in, intriguing tackles, and like you know, bit of a spicy tackles as well. So. Okay, he's calling him dishcloth because he always gets rinsed. You will. There you go. You can use that. <laughs> Um, FJT, welcome into the chat. I hope you're doing well, mate. Um, we're going to move on from defence because it's it's not been great. Oh, we've got uh, one Basaka actually. We've got one more defender, George's favourite. One Basaka for you, G Wolf. Three. Do you think attacking, he's... attacking and defensively, he was poor. Literally, well, all he kept on doing was running up and down that pitch, and he missed part. He was doing miss passes. It 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 was like a right back Casemiro today. It was just literally piss poor all over. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, whatever mark you give some of these players, remember Casemiro is going to be lower because he was. Um, yeah, I'll, maybe I'll say what I think later on. I don't know if swearing will affect my channel too much. Uh, <laughs> Kate Cadet says, Wambasaka, absolutely non event today. He gives a three. You go for these comments. Wambasaka, four. Passing was championship, according to JR. Wow, okay. I did see a positive comment. I think before. it was Division One, wasn't it? George That's reckons really he kept scoreboard. us in it. How did he keep us in it? How did he keep us in it, George? How did I left? That keep us in it. <laughs> oh, George, George, George. 
I don't know what to say. Wasn't he the one who did the tackle that nearly cost us a penalty? Um, I'm trying to think, actually, because if it was, then that's a good tackle. Because he managed to get it just outside, just outside the box. (laughs) Welcome, Duke. Duke, you might be interested to know I'm I'm planning a 10 hug. (laughs) This sounds like it's not not a protest. I'm planning a 10 hug podcast. We need to get the word right (laughs) for next week. And um, I've got a few people that want to be on. G Wolf's going to be the the pro the pro camp definitely. I've got a couple of people maybe could do the other side, but we'll see. It'll be interesting. G Wolf said he's got some good comments. I'm looking forward to his facts. It's going to be like Rafa Benitez, isn't it, G Wolf? Your, your facts. <laughs> well, fact speaks louder than. Well, his goals didn't go down one percent aside, did they? So I think he did better than. Than Dallow, definitely. Well, eh, to tell you the truth, the defence overall was just piss poor. The, well, the performance overall for Man United was piss poor, but to tell you the truth, there was only one man that kept us in it, really. Is that the referee? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what the after uh, 10 minutes of him flapping around with his mic because he couldn't oh, get it? Well, he um flapped around, didn't he, for 10 minutes, um, sorting out his mic, changing his shirt, and all that lot. Casemiro, Casemiro walked around the pitch for 90 minutes, somehow not getting substituted. Casemiro, oh dear me, Have you ever see anyone hit the wall as hard as Casemiro is. Casemiro, uh, <laughs> like, I just can't wait to sell him. I really can't wait to sell this guy. He, he has proven to me he gives us nothing at all. He doesn't give us anything in midfield. He doesn't do anything to help us in defence. It's just the worst, Literally. like, you know how, um, I'm just trying to think, cause I know that early in the season and last season actually last season he was he was getting forward quite a lot he was con- contributing quite a lot of goals a lot more than you expect for someone in his position and was a really useful player he was one of our best goal scorers from midfield last season this, this season, season is a little she... bit off the pace but the last couple of games he's been atrocious you know how Ericsson really slowed down and has been you know, not able to play much more than 50 minutes. Casemiro yep. seems to be going the same way, but he's yep. like that from minute one. The only thing is he didn't uh, have life sa- he didn't have a, a life saving like people pumping him on the pitch. Literally this guy he, he he's just draining United every time I see every time I see him is literally his passing is Absolutely atrocious, wayward passing. His heading is way off. He's not producing nothing for United whatsoever. So if I can give uh, the, yeah, uh, I'll no, have like to a, give I know it's like a cliche, but it is like having 10 men on the pitch. Or it's mm. like I could go on the pitch in place of Casemiro. And yep. I'm pretty sure I could run more. I tell you what, a ghost, Casper the friendly ghost, would do better for United than fucking Casemiro. George have got a question for you. I'll just go for that Casemiro. Yeah, absolutely dreadful today. I can't think of one good thing he did. He didn't do anything. That's the thing. Another young guy. Um, hopefully he will uh, learn from this as well. He, he did a bit better. Well, he did a lot better than Casemiro, but to, as I say, it was still it was still poor from the guy. It's another case, isn't it, of like a young player that will have ups and downs, but the experienced players are dragging him down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the experienced players are like a, a millstone around the, the young players next at the moment which is just ridiculous because instead of having you know coming into a team where you had Cantona as like the experienced player and Beckham and Skulls learning from like model professionals that turned up gaming game out Roy Keane 
alongside them as well. And what have they got? They've got someone that can barely walk around the pitch. <laughs> like an embarrassment. They, they, you could put me and you in midfield and... We'd do better. Well, actually, it would be significantly worse. <laughs> but it would still be... <laughs> but we still do better than what Casemiro does. That's the thing. Oh, mate. I feel for this kid. I really do. I really do feel for him. But in all fairness... Yeah, it was just a standard performance again. I, I'm going to have to give him a five. He, he, he did a lot better than Casemiro, but literally it was a standard five from him. I can't yeah, give him well, no I'll look, I'll look at it later. If I thought... So, Mainu, we got six from George. Um... JR says six as well. I think the problem is I'm watching the game just annoyed and I kind of see more the negatives than the yeah, the positives. So we've got a couple of sixes, we've got five from FJT. I think I'm probably going to go like five or six. What do you think, G-Wolf? Five or six? I would say a five. I think he... he I can't go no more than a six. It's like, literally, there's nothing. See, so Bruno Fernandes, who finished off a quite a nice move, probably one of our only... Well, we, we actually managed to maintain an attack for more than 10 seconds in the first half once. I think that was when we ended up getting that goal. Um, we will talk about the penalty. Like for you, G. Wolf, was it a penalty? No. For me, I don't think it was a penalty. Yes, it did hit his arm. Yes. But overall, if you look at the if you look at his um if you look at the body movement, nah, to tell you the truth. It looks it's... like he turns around and okay. Put it put it this way, if it went against Manchester United, I'd be We would um, be sa- we would annoyed. be saying it weren't a penalty. Come and on. I think if we've been what, truthful with us guys, do you, do you we that, would be um, saying it won a penalty. Do you remember that Champions League game we played when we lost one nil to a penalty? And I think the ball ricocheted off someone's. Yeah, but if uh, you actually see his, um, I think that was yeah, from no, a what I mean, shot. This wasn't a, this wasn't a clear cut ricochet from like someone's like knee to their elbow or something. It was like a bit of distance. So I think that's why they're given it because it's not that close. I think that's why it's been given. I think it's soft as anything, and we got lucky. Yeah, I, I think we got lucky with the penalty, but he kept us in it. He kept his composure from 12 yards and scored the goal for us. No one's conceding a de- deliberate penalty when the ball's going out to the side of the area like that. I, I don't think. I think we just no. got lucky. Yeah, I think it, I think I think the referee was just being kind to us. To be fair, Rock says it was a pen, but... and he says football is soft in 20. 20- I don't think might, overall. May, maybe overall, it... I don't think that was a penalty. It might be that, according to the rules, it is because it's. I think it's the distance yeah. from where it, it deflects to that player. That's yeah, probably yeah. why. Yeah, yeah. I can understand why they gave it, but the only thing is, me personally, I didn't think it was. Um, I'm agreeing with the uh, chat. I, even though that he did score. Oh, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Towards well, the end of the match, Bruno was at least still driving us forward to some extent. He he, yeah. he always moans too much. But what else? Who else? Who else is creating anything today? Like who else well, is like it. doing anything? No one else did. No one else created. I've got. Uh, I'm going to give him a six. I can't give him no. I can't give anyone high marks today. Literally. He was above average because he kept us in the game. Yes, he did try his hardest to um, push the team well, on. Good finish but... in the first first goal is good finish. Yeah, and the penalty is clinical. Was. So there's, we've got a couple of sevens there. Um, we got. I just think like overall, on the overall, yes, he had individual brilliance. But on the overall of the match... He didn't. Do, he doesn't deserve a seven. He didn't really do anything. He kept us in the match and a couple of individual yeah, brilliant six overall. And kept like us in, but... A couple of fives, a couple of sixes. Ganacho a bit quieter Again, today. Ganacho, he was 
below par. Um, didn't really get into the game. He was running around like a headless chicken. Um, didn't have any shots of what I know. Didn't really been able to get get the ball down to attack. Um, he was just really dreadful. Uh, I'm gonna have to give him a four. Unfortunately, I expected better from him today, but it just didn't come off for him. Nothing was coming off for him, and it was just really atrocious. So you give him a four. Let's see what people in the chat think. Um, I gave him a four, yeah. Paradox XYZ says five. Five for him. Cheers, Paradox, for joining as well. And we've got, we've got a five from FJT. We've got a four from JR. So it's pretty much like fours and fives. Apart from Cake. Cake's gone for three. Not impressed. George says, cost us the first goal with the touch of the lamppost. There was like a, a few of that. Do you, do you blame Kanachi for the first goal, G-Wolf? No. Um, don't get me wrong. It was a... Um, <clears throat> it was a piss-poor touch, but tell you the truth it, yeah, like you know as i said i think kemba Walla, he could have uh i think he should have done a lot better defensively if you especially like you know in that area like you're in that area you're, you're like he was just backing off and then he got twist and turned and kemba Walla slipped and then slanky uh literally powered it towards goal but I think um, defensively, I think Kemba Waller should have done better. So, no, I don't blame Ganacho for the goal. But it, FJT it was does, just. I think. It was FJT just. FJT said he's, he, he it... cost us that goal, so he's given him a three. No. No, he didn't cost us a goal. No, you know, yeah. Jake, thanks for tuning in, mate. He says, um, I'll see you next time, guys. I'll give up on this team, on this entire team. I don't know. Oh, don't don't give don't give up on Mainu, Kambuala, Ganacho. They're still young. They're still they hopes are still for them. young. It's just unfortunately, uh, they haven't got any uh any assistance from the experience from the experienced uh, players. Talking of experienced players, G Wolf, we have Marcus Rashford. Who G I think G Wolf, someone was trying to troll me. I think you're comments. putting words in my mouth there, George. Um, at the end of the day, no, I don't disagree with Eric Ten Hag, who hooked him up because of it. If you actually see, why right, the person that we really needed was um, was uh, Ahmed to start rather than having Ganacho. But he put he put Ganache, he put Ahmed on for the second half, and he did a lot better than what Ganache was doing. So we're going to talk about Rashford now, and Kate Cadet's opening with this line: "D Wolf set the scene." He says Rashford was the worst player on the pitch today, zero out of ten. I mean, Castamira was running him close, I would say, although. Rashford was an important part of the first goal build-up in terms of like keeping the move alive. And I thought he actually did a bit better than he has recently with that move because he often gets pushed off the ball. But I can see why people get frustrated. But in terms of that one move, it, it was... And that was the thing. Individ it's like individual, individual brilliance from these players. They have um, <coughs> moments... In Do you the find game. the frustrating thing is that Rashford's clearly got a higher ceiling than a lot of the team, but we don't see it that often. The, what he can do, we saw it last season. We know that he can be ridiculously good. We just don't see it. Exactly. We don't see it week in, week out from the guy. And this is the thing. I can understand the reason why Kate wants him gone. Me, preferably, I would want him gone now. I think... I think... Um, like, you know, he's been here for a bit too long. He's only had one great season. 
yeah, and he hasn't done anything past that. Like, you know, uh, I'm going to have to give him a three. Literally, he, 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 like, you know, he created the first goal for us, helped us keep in the game. But apart from that, there was nothing else that the guy didn't, he didn't do anything. A um, couple of wayward runs, he got in, jingled all about, and got a good shot. But literally, you can't like. He was a couple of yards out, and he could have just either crossed it or, like you know. But he took the shot, and it went into the side netting. But I think there could have been a pass on. Yeah, it's tricky, and isn't it? it and he I, didn't do it. I don't know he what's going on with Rashford. Shot. Because for me, it's the most frustrating one because of that with the 30 goals in all competitions last year, it was, which is in terms of like comparing them to other players across Europe, it's, it's in the very, very top level. But this season, just no one near that. And it's not an injury issue. I just no. wonder whether some of these players just want to, like maybe Casemiro, Rashford, maybe they just need a different club, different environment. Because so I don't know whether he's actually motivated enough to, to play anymore. Um, George, no, don't even tempt it. So I think we've what got three, four. What did you give him? We've got a one and a four. I think there's like another low mark. What do you reckon, G Wolf? What's that? Mark wise for Rashford. Uh, four. I, I gave uh, Marcus Rashford a, a uh, three, I think. So I think, yeah, I think we'll go with that today. Yeah, that's not the lowest mark we've given him. Now, uh, Hoyland. Uh, didn't get no service. Didn't, didn't really do anything. He did try and close down. He was closing down the goalkeeper and closing people down a lot more, I thought, than his previous games since he's come back from injury. Um, so the, you can't take anything away from the work rate, but still, I thought he was still poor. Um, I'm going to give him a four, but he didn't get any service at all, but he did well. He did okay. He's just struggling to get into the game at all, isn't he, recently? Yeah. But, but even, before when he, even before when he went on his um, quite a good scoring run, a lot of that was things he made himself. There wasn't like there was there wasn't it wasn't like you know in the nineties when we had Andy Cole and he'd score a few goals but miss lots of chances. We're not really seeing Hoyland get four or five chances and then take one or two. It's like it just doesn't. I was just watching today thinking if we score a goal, who's going to score a goal apart from a penalty or maybe I don't know who was like the goal scorer because Hoyland didn't look like he was going to get like a shot, let alone be a goal well, threat. If people pass to him and like you know create stuff for him he would score he like, can't you know, really hold the ball up that well I, I just don't see him really getting into the game and i don't know it's disappointing it was disappointing but he didn't i'm not get saying he doesn't service. try or anything but it's just one of those things where everything that goes to him just seems to get lost or he runs off the wrong place or Nothing's really, nothing's working, is it? I don't know whether it's just, it hasn't clicked since he's come back from injury. But a four from George. But he did do a lot better than uh, last games. Yeah, he met, yeah this wasn't great. I think a three or four. For him, so four. What do you reckon, G Will? Three or four? Um, I, I went with probably. a four. I went with a four for uh, four. for Hoyland. Yeah, Jalo, do you remember how many minutes Jalo played? Um, fifteen minutes. Let me just check. Was it about fifteen, twenty minutes? He must he be got? wondering what he has to do to start in this team at the moment. <clears throat> So anyway, and no matter how, no matter how many minutes he got, at the end of the day, he did a lot better than what Ganacho did. But again, 
I'm going to give no more than a five. I thought he um, could have done better with a... Uh, he could have got into the game a lot more. I didn't really see too much of him, but... But what... But what I did, he did okay. Cheers, Travis. I was checking. Yeah, Ahmed hasn't had any starts this season, which seems ridiculous, doesn't it? Considering was it 45 minutes? Oh, there you go. He had 45. He had 45 minutes. And he did better than Ganacho. So there you go. Yeah. But as again, it was still like, you know, he wasn't creating any chance. He didn't create hardly any chances by what I saw. But. He did a lot better than what Ganatra did, so uh, I'll give him a five. Yeah, I think I'd say George has gone a bit high. FJT has yeah. gone quite low, probably. So an average of five still, if anyone else wants to vote. Yeah, I think it's one of these cases, again, where at some point you've got to say he probably needs to have a start because we're going to be drifting along sort of seventh, sixth, seventh, eighth place in the league. The performances aren't changing, are they? We're seeing the same thing week in, week out. At some point, you just have to look at it and go, look, why is Casemiro starting? Why is Rashford exactly. starting? So, uh, Jallo's here. He could he could start. You've got other players that could start. So I think we'll give him like an average five based on the comments. And here's another person that, if Casemiro can play 90 minutes, why doesn't Mount get a start? Exactly. Like, you know, maybe he should, <clears throat> maybe he should start getting it starting, but he's still coming back from injury. Um, obviously, he, he came on last week against, against Liverpool. He's came on today. Um, also, he played against Brentford as well, I believe. So, yeah, I think he. I think he will um, be in for a uh, for a start. But again, like you know, like the game was already at two two when when Mount came on. So again, well, we're, we're, we're going to be playing a game soon, FA Cup semi final against Coventry City. But Coventry City certainly can't be taken lightly because at that stage of the competition, this is a massive game for mm. their team. We can't have Casemiro strolling around. We can't have Rashford strolling around the pitch. No, People like Jaro um, and Mount, they must be pushing for a start, surely. Sure. I think um, Ahmed will start in against um, Coventry. I'd be quite surprised if he doesn't. <clears throat> and also uh, Mason Mount as well. I'd be surprised if he doesn't start as well against Coventry. So then that we can rest some of uh, the players like Casemiro, Rashford, even though that Rashford rest is him. just come, even Dewolf, though that he just rested today, Casemiro rested this match. He doesn't need to rest. He rested for ninety minutes today. <laughs> yeah, but he, he just needs to replace it. So, to the truth, I this could be a perfect to person amount. to be replaced. At half time, I went downstairs and had something to eat. I probably covered a similar distance to Casemiro. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> It doesn't need resting. It needs a different environment, a different if I club. I remember I rightly, Casemiro did have a header, but it went over the bar, no? He did have a header, but it went well over. Okay, we got we got a four from Mount. FJT says he doesn't like Mount, and Kate doesn't care about Mount. Mount's not very popular, actually. I do share JR's concerns about Coventry because it's not an easy one. I'm not I'm not really worried about Coventry. Um, I'm just do, hoping FGT. that the players will turn up. I think if the players turn up, we can um, score quite a few quite a few goals against them. But the players need to um, take responsibility. What what is on the pit? What is being yeah. we're, seen we're like on not the pitch? Even, we're we're not in the normal sort of situation for Manchester United where. We have to look at rotating for fitness reasons and rest. We're playing one game a week now. We're not normally at this stage of the season. You've got difficult Champions League matches. You've got to try and balance resources. We're playing one game a week. And we play Bournemouth, and we scrape a draw. We always look unfit. We always get outworked. It's just 
Yeah, I'm starting but... to, I'm going to have to change my uh, sort of view in match previews because I think we're taking sides too lightly because Bournemouth outworked us, Fulham outplayed us. Um, we will talk about Ten Hag at the end. Um, Travis says Mount six. Still no idea what he brings to the table. It's hard to say, isn't it? Because he comes on and matches. They don't change too much, apart from the match when he came on against Brentford, which was a dreadful match, and he scored don't a goal. Forget, he's been injured for major for majority of the season. No, so yeah, FGT just thinks he's yeah. He's not a fan. Mm, I, I'm still giving him Mount a four because of, like, you know, he didn't really do anything to change the game. But Okay, I'll just double-check the marks. Overall, I think we've got six I, from overall, Travis. I will, overall, I do quite like mark. Mount. I just don't even know. I don't think we've seen enough. We we spent a lot of money on a player that we just don't see him play much at all. I think, I don't I know think what... you'll find that he will play against um, Coventry. And then hopefully we can see then what you can do. Oh, let's see what people... FTT, I don't know how we're going to sell these players, to be honest. We only made two substitutions today as well, G-Wolf. Considering the way the game was going, do you find that surprising? Sorry, what? Max substitutions we made today. Some of the substitutions I was in favour for, like, you know, Ganacho coming off at half-time for Ahmad Diallo. Obviously, Ten Hag needed to change things up. Um, do, you, do you think it's strange when he made two, though? Mm, well, he made one at half-time and then the other one around about 70 minutes. But I think with the players, he thought that was on there. Like, you know, he hasn't, he's only got mainly youngsters. Like, maybe he could have taken off um, Juan Bissaka for Amas. So he you got, you got Amrabat on the bench. We had Ericsson on the bench. Yeah, but Apart are, those that, really the sort, are those really the sort of players that you think can change a game around? I, I don't think we could change so. Casemiro for someone that could move slightly more. <laughs> well, yeah. Maybe he could have come off after like our half time, but I don't know. Um, George says, I like this comment, I'm gonna read it. It says, I'm starting to think Eric Ten Hag watches this show and is making us even worse just to see how deep G Wolf can dig these holes. Thoughts on that, G Wolf? <laughs> oh my god how bad do we have hey, to look, go before you Ten get Hag is listening to me and we're not as bad as what people think okay you could say yeah we could do better yes but I think uh, the manager's doing a pretty good job with what he's got at his disposal once he gets um, once Ineos gets un in underneath the table and uh, start putting their plan putting the process together next season you're going to see a whole different Manchester United and Ten Hag should be a part of it because of if any other manager comes in you're just going to see that the you're just going to see absolutely piss poor management <laughs> from Manchester Are United that that no Are we're we? not Are we we're that, seeing a, to the truth this is one of the best one of the best managers that Manchester United have had since post Fergie. And I uh, and I'd say in next season, you uh, next um next week, you will say I, I will be giving you a load of facts, the reason why I'm saying it. So don't it, this is not on uh, this these results that you're seeing this year is not over because of um Ten Hag. Box says he loves your unwavering support. That, that, that this view isn't isn't really um, shared amongst other people in the chat. I know, but because they want um, Ten Hag out. But the only thing is, if you read what you sow, guys, because of I tell you what, if you think that Southgate and uh, Potter are gonna do a lot better than what Ten Hag is doing now, prepare for a disappointment because we'll be fighting for relegation. And that's exactly what I can see. 
Yeah, I just saw this. JR said Casimir has become Fellaini. Which... Uh, without the hairstyle, yeah? Without the height. And the height. <laughs> AFC always says, is this a world record, really? Does it matter how many shots you concede? I know people are talking about this a lot recently. Does it actually matter? Well, Gee, Wolf, do you care how many shots we concede? No, but I did see that it was about, what is it, 132 or something like that? Shots on goal. Which is the uh, most that, like, you know, that any uh, team has had on their goal. This is one for you, G. Wolf. Before we, we go, we'll go for the Ten Hag marks in a minute. No, Scott McTominay is not better than Fletcher. Fletcher was an absolute beast in midfield. McTominay gets nowhere near Fletcher. In my I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that for another day. Right, if you want to quickly put marks in for Ten Hag, because I did miss a few of them. I'm going no, six no, for. I'm going for a six for Ten Hag. I think he deserved. He, he did a. He could have done better. He could have made more substitutions. Well, what but... should you have done differently, G Wolf, to get a seven or eight for you? You give him a six. What would what could he do to get more? Um. Well, I think his starting lineup. He could have um put a few more of the uh, youth youth players in. Um, to start with, I um, also he could have brought on a few more players other than the two. But overall, he couldn't really change the whole complexity of the game. Do you know what I mean? Because of like you know, he can only put out what what he's got on the bench, and like you know, if he hasn't got players like McTominay or any or. Uh, or Varan or Evans to come on or to start, then there's not a lot that he can really do. So overall, as I say, I think if it, if if he um had a strong a strong bench, I think he could he would have made a lot more changes than what he could. But because we only had youngsters, okay. there Put was way. no point. There was no point in bringing on the youngsters and being disappointed at the end of the match. We were disappointed during it, though. If there's a, well, okay, I'm going to yeah, go for the comment. I don't think anyone agrees I just think that he. I just think there by that he's trying to protect the youngsters as well. So, Box says 10 out of 8 out of 10, showing real signs of implementing his vision. So I appreciate sarcasm, Box. Philosophy, he's here for it, he says. So I'm guessing Box isn't, wasn't a fan of 10 Hag to start with then. Kate Cadets, pretty much... Uh, stays true to what he believes and says one out of ten for Ten Hag for him. Oh dear. Cake. So you prefer Southgate and Harry Potter? I don't think that's what he's saying. I don't think he's saying he wants Southgate. So I don't. I don't... If someone doesn't want Ten Hag, it doesn't mean they want Southgate, G Wolf. Well, it, well, the only thing is, anybody that's the uh, players that we've been linked with. So. Anybody who thinks you're know, like that, who's saying that they want ten hog out, that those are the that's the reality of the off. management. I'm laughing at George's comment. Uh, Travis says Eric Ten Hag three out of ten. Poor lineup, outclassed on the day, shit subs, and three because the players deserve their share of the blame. That's what he's gone for. I think you got to blame the player, or the, you got to blame the players instead of Ten Hag. Ten Hag can only do what he can, and to tell you the truth, it like you know, he's got a lot of injuries to contend with, which is down to the medical team. It, that's not down to Ten Hag. Um, so, I think everyone should have a little bit more respect for the manager of what. Of what he's got to deal with, rather than uh, basically portraying him as a uh, ship manager. Yeah, George says, if he leaves the door unlocked every day of the year, does that make him more likely to eventually get robbed? Depends where you, where do you live, George. Maybe it makes no difference depending on where you live. I don't know. I would say if you leave the door open, that makes you more likely to get robbed. If people know it's open. 
Um, AFC, um, too early to tell. No, I think AFC, it's the, it's... yeah. Uh, I can see what I can see what Ten Hag is doing, but I'm not going to tell you in case you want to use it for your own philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, basically, it's a secret then, G. Wolf. That you're saying, yeah. Okay, because so I'm not, I'm not 100% seeing it. Let's be honest. So, AFC, we can't answer that question. Obviously, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> do, you, do you think he's passed it on to the players though? Because I'm not sure they ha they know either. Dear, dear me, George. Do, do you want a, a pitch question from Box G Wolf? This is a good one. Does oh. G Wolf believe a dry, freshly cut grass would have won us the game today as opposed to a slightly grown out, wet, waterlogged grass? I think it would have been a lot better performance for Manchester United with a dry, freshly cut grass rather than having a waterlogged pitch where we had to slip around for like 90 percent of the time i think the players would have been on their feet a lot more and weren't slipping look look how many times kemba Wala and Minu and all that lot was slipping because of the wet pitch it was absolutely ludicrous they they they, they only did it to help themselves and not to help us. I've lost track of what Mark were given. It's probably going to be an average one. You, what did you give him a six, G Wolf? Was it a six? I gave I gave him a six. And then Box gave him an eight, but I think it was sarcastic. There was like ones and twos. I think it's, it's probably going to be like a three or four average, maybe like four. Just for that. Um, Just I think for he that. does realize that. Why, why does having a crap pitch benefit Bournemouth more than us? Because of obviously they're used to it. They got they gotten used to um, doing it. How, how do you know that their pitch on the training ground isn't uh, absolutely waterlogged? And they were, you know, and they weren't using that as a uh, as an example. Hence the reason why they were used to it on their on their field. you given Ten Hag a three. Yeah, there was a lot of ones in chat, to be fair. <laughs> G-Wolf isn't happy. G-Wolf, look, FJT gave a one. Um, wow. Who else gave a one? A lot of three from Travis, I think, or JR. I got another one from somebody else. <clears throat> Cake as well. So Cake and FJT both gave him a one. Whatever. So you try and bring it back from man of the match, which might be a, might be a stretch. Uh, no one deserves the man of the match. Bruce to me, no goals. one deserves the man of the match. Shout, he? No one deserves the man of the match. Hey Dora, we're just being right, roasting Dora. G Wolf a little bit. <laughs> G -Wolf yeah, part. I'm giving I'm giving no one man of the match. Any any candidates? Not even well. Bruno scored None twice. No, uh, I don't think it, like you know individual right? a cheap pen, a cheap giveaway penalty which he scored from and one individual brilliance. No, nah, don't deserve man of the match. Individual brilliance doesn't deserve man of the match. She will come on. No. Nah. <laughs> one individual moment. Sorry, not. <laughs> not brilliance, but one individual moment does not deserve man of the match. How many times do you reckon you've mentioned waterlogged pitch tonight? Uh, quite a lot. Reckons... And I tell you what, I, I'm just absolutely disgusted with the Bournemouth groundsman, and I think they should be. Uh, I think uh, there should be um, an inspection. 
of uh, why the grass was so dry before the uh, before they had the inspection, and then afterwards it was waterlogged. Yes, George, I know the uh, earth is round. But if you keep on walking, you might find the core. Of this the is a good one. Oh. It's a, uh, the, a medical sta the medical staff at United is, more, is worse than the groundsman. And the medical staff at United is just absolutely atrocious and needs to be uh, sacked straight away. George, it, it may look a little bit flat from where you are, but let's not really, let's not go there. That's when he's opening up his Pepsi, isn't it? Do you, do you always talk down match winners or match savers, as Gerald said? No, I don't. I, I will, I will um, praise players that deserve it. And as I say, individual moment, brilliant. Yeah, it was a cheap, it was cheap um, penalty to give away for the equaliser. Yeah, Box said, should we start watering Old Trafford before games and attempt to recreate Bournemouth's conditions? Although we didn't play that well <laughs> in it, Box. I don't know if that's a good idea. We did. Yeah, we tried that. Uh, no, I don't want that. I like our groundsmen. At least they, um, at least they fork our pitch. So let's give man the match to Bruno then for two goals. That, uh, obviously, that, that's who people want as their man of the match. Nobody else deserves it, though, do they? No, not really. He, he, he scored two goals, that's it. There was no one else that was really playing as well as Bruno. Bruno wanted it more. And that's well, a, a and then people still slate him for being captain. But you see what he can see what he brings to us. He I, literally the captain was everywhere. The captain was good today, but even he can um stop uh, Bournemouth from scoring two goals. Yeah. FJT said so it's Bournemouth. So overall, G Wolf, you you're happy with a point, are you? I think it's a point gained and then two points uh, dropped. Um, I would have been a lot happier if we got the point if we did get the points. But to tell you the truth, losing three nil to New, which one would you rather have? Three nil losing to uh, Newcastle or two nil to or two or getting a getting a point at Bournemouth. I'll tell you which one I'll be happy with. Well, obviously, it's, it's better than a defeat, but it's still pretty crap, isn't it? It, it is what it is. Look, at the end of the day, we were poor today. Could have done better. We didn't. We got the, We got a draw. So if people want to say it's two points gained, two points dropped... I say that is a point gained because of if once we uh, once we um, play in the uh, like you know when we play in the next match, providing we get the uh, victory, and um, there's a couple and, of questions uh, I'll go through. If, if people got questions, let's get. We'll go for a few questions. First one from Box is G Wolf confident versus Coventry? Yes. I think you're going to see a whole different that. United. Well, you're going to see a, you're going to see it. Yeah, you will. You see a different lineup for starters. You won't see Casemiro in the team. You won't see. You probably won't see um, Rashford in the team or Ganacho. And I think Ahmad will play, and so will um, Mason Mount. So box. 
It says, is this the worst season for me as a Manchester United fan? I would say probably not, because we didn't get pumped 7-0 by Liverpool this season. That was probably a low point. Uh, for an entire season, I, can't, I think I've seen them finish below 10. Like 12, uh, I can't remember when it was in the late 80s, they finished quite low. Yeah, in the late 80s, um, Alec Ferguson, we finished 13th. Under Alec yeah, Ferguson. Considering, considering money sort of... spent the last couple of years, this is some of the most disappointing football I've watched. I'll say that. But the only thing is, look how many players that we brought back in um, when Alec Ferguson compared to what we're paying now. Literally, the transfer market has evolved, and I keep on and I keep on saying this, and people not believing. Like literally, I don't know why people think that we're going to get players cheap. Now we're not. For an average player, you you're definitely paying fifty to sixty million for an average player now. And I keep on telling people this, and like you know, people don't want to understand it. So, hi to Andrew. Thanks for watching the, the watch long earlier, Andrew. And just regarding what Andrew's marks he's got here, I would probably agree that for me, Casemiro was the worst player on the in the team. Certainly, oh yeah, definitely. And Bruno the best. So I think that that's pretty much reflected in your marks as well. You got a zero for Casemiro, five for Bruno. I think we gave Rashford like a three. Everybody else is like pretty similar actually. Hoyland and Rashford were poor. Ganacho not a good game. I'd probably give him Maguire and Wambasaka the, the better of the defensive marks. So I think we're probably fairly in agreement. Yeah, not too much, not too much disagreement. Um, Cake says sack Ten Hag. I don't know when we're going to do this Ten Hag podcast. I want to know if we can sack Cake Cadet. Sack Cake Cadet. <laughs> I've got a question oh, for Andrew. Yeah. He's probably been, like, Andrew and G-Wolf, because you've probably been watching Manchester United and maybe Box as well, longer than some people. What's the, it, like, For me, this isn't the worst season Manchester United have had because they've done a lot worse. It's probably, probably just before the Premier League era started. But do you, do you think this is worse than the Ragnarok era? Mm, no, definitely not. Ragnick was a lot worse. Ragnick didn't have a clue what he was doing. But the only thing is, Ragnick was right about one thing. We did need uh, open heart surgery. And it's going to take about 10, 15 players. We did need, we do need around about 10, 15 new players in before we can start going on a good run. But that's not down to Ten Hag. That's down to the, to the owners, which was... First of all, it was um, the Glazers, but the Glazers were spending on who they wanted and also who the directors wanted it. And now hopefully Ineos can, can hopefully um, get us back to where we need to. Yeah, it just seems like the players that have left... We replaced them with worse ones. I know we talk about Dan James occasionally, but we, we replaced him with worse players. Ronaldo left, wasn't playing very well. We replaced him with like no striker. And if like if we lost if Harry Maguire left like you want him to, we probably replaced him with a worse defender. I just think we've regressed. Maguire's apparently, picked up a bit. Yeah, you know, apparently. Ten Hag stormed out the press conference and had a dig at Garnacho. So things aren't looking great at the moment, G Wolf. If if you were in Ineos, would you be one hundred percent backing Ten Hag and going right? Here's X amount of money, this number of new players, and think you're good as manager for the, the next couple of years. The only thing is, yeah, right, at the end of the day, there's going to be there's going. There's got to be agreement on both sides, on Eric Ten Hag and also on Ineos. Like, you know that if you... Obviously, Ineos have got have got to know whether um, Ten Hag is in by the end of the season or not now. 
because if he's not, then they got to work. They got to try and bring in the manager and trying to get the players in as well at the same time. Would they really yeah. do that if they were going to sack um te- if if they were going to sack Ten Hag now? I don't think they would. I think they I think they would have come out and said that we're going to have to sack Ten Hag, or Ten Hag would have been sacked so the new manager can get in well before the um well before the transfer deadline day de- um, deadline um starts so then that we can get in the players in early because that's what we need to do. We need to get these players in early. We can't just wait. If if the player doesn't want to come to United, wait on to the next one. We can't keep on doing. We can't keep on um, going in and saying, "Oh yeah, we're going to wait until the end of it." We're going to wait until the end of the um, transfer near the transfer window when it's on deadline day and say, "Yeah, well, okay, we're going to get three or four players in on that on that day." Can't happen. What do you think of this, G Wolf? If this is well. To tell you the truth, obviously um, Eric Ten Hag he is um, a bit annoyed about the res- about the result. Obviously, he'd probably be annoyed about the pitch as well, which I think you find that he was. Um, and also, he is probably more disappointed in Ganacho rather than like you know, and just saying what's on his mind and just saying look maybe Ganacho could have done better um with the tap with the tap had, had a poor game goal. didn't he Ganacho yeah um, Ganacho had a poor game but to tell you the truth it's just I, a stupid it, thing to do though from Ganacho shouldn't really do that it's just a bit stupid isn't it because if he uh, probably didn't have a have a dig at him he just probably said that he could have done better like you know Eric Ten Hag isn't the sort of um Oh, you know, he isn't apart from uh, you know, with Sancho. But to tell you the truth, Sancho is just an absolute crybaby and should literally man up a bit instead yeah, of going I mean, into his. Where were um, all these comments and the, whatever's happened? But it's like a bit you know, difficult to say what's happened behind the scenes. If I was Manchester United manager watching the performance today, I'm actually watching the Liverpool performance. I wouldn't have even put Casemiro in the team. So Casemiro wouldn't be on the pitch if I was the manager because he's just not good enough at the moment. And he Rashford, I think, but, well, he'll be he'll be struggling to get as many minutes. But the only thing is, he he expects more from Ganacho. Obviously, he's not expecting anything from Casemiro. More than Casemiro. More than someone like... what well, Rashford scored 30 goals last season. You're expecting more from Ganacho in the team than Rashford. Yeah, but he know. Yeah, but as you've seen all season, look what Canacho can do, and what and look at what Rashford and Gash- Casemiro has done this season. Who would you say is the better out of them three players? Definitely Canacho. Would you expect more from Canacho? Yes. Bath time. Um, in the face of a lot of criticism, Ten Hag's got on this stream from most people in the comments. G Wolf. Um, what do you want to say? I want to put words into your mouth, Jewel. I, I, I'm definitely backing um, the manager still. Um, bath time. At the end of the day, yeah, why I'm not going to blame him for this result. And it's down to the players, which has been all the way out through this season. It's been the players, and the players need to um, man up and stop throwing their dummy out of their prime. If they if they really want a good season, then the players need to get on side. Get alongside with the manager. Which players do you blame the most? Huh? Which players do you blame the most? If you say it's the um, players' fault, who do you blame I've, the most? I would say Rashford is at fault. Um, Casemiro is at fault. Varane's at fault. Um, Dallo's at fault. Onana, maybe he could do better, but it's still his first team season every single in game, the though. Premier League. Do you, not think Ten, do you not blame Ten Hag for putting these players back in the team week in, week out? But he can only put what he's got at his disposal. Like, you know, if half of the team are crocked and injured or carrying niggly injuries, he's not going to play them because of it. Which, to tell you the truth, which is smart management. Like, you know, would you put a, would you put a crocked player in 
right, that you know that if you could play him for just one game and he can be in, like, you know, people are saying about Martial, like, you know, Martial is always a sick note. Now, like, Varane as well. Hi, Baf. Tell me anyway, he says, um, what does Ten Hag have to do, G-Wolf, for you to think it might be time for a change? Um, at the moment, nothing. Um, I think he is the right person to go forward. I don't think um, swapping and changing management at this time would be beneficial for us because of uh, there's no manager there's no manager out there that can do a better job than what Eric Ten Hag has done. That is doing. So, so okay, so that's that's your reason then that you just think that a change would make it worse. I think, think a change Ten Hag is... definitely with the management with the um play, with the managers that we've been linked with, it'll be a hell of a lot worse than what we got now. We need to have the right sort of manager that to um thingy, and at the moment, I would back Ten Hag. And keep it. Try okay. and keep hopefully, this that, shit. hopefully, that answers your questions. That G, G was not changing his mind at all. What would your view be, G Wolf? Right? Is it? You say there's no managers available. If there was a manager available, then like pick a couple of managers. You think if they were available, you'd go right. Buy it's probably the right sort of manager, though. That's the only thing. Like. I'm thinking of managers like Ancelotti and those type of managers. Diego Simeone? Mm, possibly, but I think it would be um, a bit difficult considering that he doesn't talk English. But... Um, yeah, he might at, be the right, moment, at the moment... Um, I just think I, I just don't think we're gonna get ever get um Don Carlo. So I think at the moment we should just stick with Ten Hag and just back him until until a deserving manager does come come available, rather than having the uh, the management that has been linked with Manchester United so far. I think they said he'd take Lampard. Lampard, are you sure? Lampard is a, a low one. Would you would you take Ollie back, G Wolf? Mm. Are you tempted? Providing that Ollie gets the backing from the um from Ineos and doesn't get and gets the players that Ollie wants. Because as okay, we can so see, put, put, put this scenario in place. Then We're, we've seen that they're looking at a sporting director, better people running the academy. All the people they're poaching from like Newcastle, Southampton, they're getting these people in place behind the scenes. They're going to be better in the transfer market. G Wolf, let's assume that. Let's say we're going to spend money wiser. We've got more prospects coming through the academy. Do you go? Then I, would, then I probably would. Then I probably would go with Ollie, but it's never going to happen. So at the moment, I'm going to stick with Ten Hag, and I think at the moment Ten Hag is playing a lot more. So you got Jose? No way. Ollie Southgate Potter. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I have to go with our man Ollie. If uh, if I had to pick one out of them, then definitely Ollie. I would not take Jose back. I think he's an absolute shit house of a manager. Southgate is just absolutely shit gate, and Harry Potter can't wave a fucking wand to save his life. But if um Potter wins with England, do you change your mind then? Not for um, if Southgate wins with England, do you change your mind? No. No, no. I've seen what Southgate can do under uh, under club management, and uh, I'm not impressed. You're not impressed by Mourinho's 
win record under in club management. Jose Mourinho loves to berate players, and that's something that United should never have at the club. I don't give a shit how much he's won, how much he won us. I do not want that shit house back at United. Okay, I don't mind Mourinho actually. I think Mourinho said a few facts. Some players. I think maybe the problem is some of these things need to be behind closed doors, and you don't want it to be. A, a show but the only in thing the is, Jose eye. loves to berate players in his in his um press conferences. It doesn't matter whether like you know they've had a reasonable good game or not. Also, the the players that. Mourinho got on well with players that worked really well. He speaks very highly of they. They got on well. I think if you get the right players in, Mourinho is a, a good manager. Yeah, but he likes he just likes six feet people. He doesn't like speed. Play, doesn't really like speed players. He likes to slow the game down. Whereas I think that we need to rather speed the game up rather than <laughs> slow it but down. G will fall. But the thing is, look, looking at the pitch, like we can't speed it up. Casemiro, Eriksson, Maguire. There you go. That's what I'm saying. Pace, like you it? know, that's what I'm saying. Like you know, those sort of players, we don't need at the club. Like if we got play, if we got more players like um, like Ahmed or Ganacho and and all that lot, we need to literally, if we're going to a counter attack, we need to a counter attack at pace, not just slow the ball down at every given moment. Okay, but if we're not playing a counter attacking game. I say we want to control the match. I still Do don't remember, want to have Jose remember, Mourinho as our remember manager. Croatia, remember Croatia against, I think it's Croatia against Canada, where Canada come out of the blocks, loads of very fast players, look incredible. I think they scored after a couple of minutes. Then Croatia got back into the game and completely controlled the game with players that are half the speed. For me, mm, if you want to control yeah. the game, you don't need pace, you need quality. I still think that we can, we, United, well, I remember United at old, like, we had players that are pacey on the wings, good, um, good at their feet, great yeah, crosses you like Beckham. Sprinters. You don't need sprinters in the middle of the pitch, do you? You don't need like someone like Modric. You don't think but oh, let's put Modric one... in the middle of the pitch because he can it's sprint like up and down. It's like we need one person. Yeah, but if you look, you know, right, look who we had back in the nineties. We had Roy Keane. Now he wasn't no slouch. Yeah, okay, he was. He was a bit slow, but he was still decent, right? And so maybe like having someone like him. He, Someone like of his caliber, but a little bit more, but can be a box to box. We've always had one in centre midfield covering the uh, centre backs. Would you would you say that that Scholes was pacey? No, Scholes Roy, couldn't Roy, even tackle. Roy Keen. Was Keen pacey? Do you think? I thought he was a little bit pacey. Yeah, well, he won no slouch. Was Beckham pacey? Beckham was precise. With his, uh, we had Pacey uh, front front line, Pacey front line in um, Andy Cole and uh, Dwight York. So I'd say the the team you think about Manchester United's golden and era. Also, also um, Gary Neville was Pacey. Yeah, maybe I'm just trying to think that Nicky Butt Keane, not really so much. Giggs, Giggs, you'd say, Paul was pacey. Was, uh, had a bit of pace about him. And so did Carrick, when needed be. And yeah, also Nicky the... Butt. I, see, I don't, like, you know, the only ones that really weren't was Scholes, um, Robson and uh, Beckham. But I thought Carrick yeah, and Scholes, Paul Scholes, Ince and Butt. Scholes is probably the best player on that list. Scholes is the best player on that pit, on the uh, list, alongside Beckham. Alongside probably... Beckham. I think Scholes and Beckham, both of them are on the uh, same wavelength. I don't know about this comment. Carrick moved as fast as an ice age. <laughs> that, that's that, what, so twice as fast as Casemiro then? Wow. I thought Carrick was a little, has got a little bit of pace about him when he, needs, when he needed to. 
I thought he did well for United. Yeah, Bathtub says Robson is arguably. I don't know Robson. May, maybe Robson's peak was a bit earlier than I watched. It's kind of Robson, difficult to say. Robson was great. Don't get me wrong. Robson was great, and I would love to have him in our midfield now. But um, I only just saw the end of his uh, on the at the end of his reign, and he was pretty good. But I don't know what he was like in his prime. But I've heard great things about him in his prime. People were saying that he was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I think think Manchester. But, I just uh, think Manchester United maybe need maybe need to slow things down. I know you say speed it up. I think the the I way think, that uh, the in the right spread. areas we need to we need speed. I think our wingers need. I think our um our right backs and left backs need to be speedy. Do you think the 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 speed enough though? No. Wan Bissaka isn't speedy and nor is um Dallo. But then I see that like you know, Ganacho, he's speedy. I quite I say I think um Is Ganacho speedy? So I'm I'm just thinking Ganacho does seem to be like initially quick off the block out of the blocks, but in terms of like he doesn't really leave people. Who? Ganacho. He doesn't, but he's still young, though. That's the only thing. But he is speedy. You, you don't coach. You don't coach speed, do you? No. So he's not going to develop speed. I don't know. I was just thinking. <laughs> Bath phone call and be kind, G Wolf. So we need more speed. I was. Just, I was just thinking that in terms of like speed, that's one attribute that declines. And I think Giggs was one of my favourite players when he was playing for United. And I think he had he had speed, but he had. Um, guile and mm. just um what's the word i'm looking for he didn't need to beat people with speed he was just able to misdirect people i think manchester United don't really have that you need someone that's got a bit more on the ball like like bruno i think we gave him man of the match today and was probably one of the best players but he doesn't do enough of what we want does he it's not about his speed bruno can run around all day but we want someone that can control games more but Bruno can only do so much. And Bruno is our, uh, our, he does play brilliantly. But if he hasn't got any runners, especially like, you know, players like um, Ganacho making the runs often, or Rashford even making the runs more often, then Bruno is just going to keep the ball. He's just going to slow the game down. Whereas I think if those runners run a little bit more, he could have um, pinged the ball a lot more, which we have done, which we have seen him have do doing it. It just won't yeah, our day just, today. I know. I was just thinking that I don't know if G Wolf even knows the answer to this question. I'm not even sure how you. No, assess Gary Neville is a lot more be is a lot more uh, patier than uh, than Neville. The amount of times that Neville got part went. Um, <laughs> went on the overlap, whereas um, Dallo doesn't. He, he more goes inverted. But I think Gary Neville will definitely beat Dallo. A prime Neville will beat Dallo. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't remember Gary. I don't really think of Gary Neville as being fast. I don't know. He was. He I was, was I thought really, he had a, he was really fast. If you saw I just him, he had a good like, understanding. Every time, that he, every time that he overlapped, every time that he, whenever there was an attack, Gary Neville on that right hand side, Gary Neville was always involved. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing that he overlapped Beckham. I'm just wondering. I'm not. I don't remember it being because of his speed. I just. I know he had a good understanding with Beckham. They did play well together. Bafton thinks Dallow is the fastest player, which I don't know if that's true. I don't think that's true. I don't know, people used to say Pallister was the quickest player. I'm not sure if that's 100 percent true, but <laughs> it could be though. He was he was a pretty tall guy, wasn't he? About six foot four, so maybe he was pretty fast. Next, you're going to say yeah, why though? I don't know. 
Wayne Rooney was the fastest player back in the day. Rooney was quite fast. I was going to say, back in the day, Cristiano Ronaldo surely was the, one of the fastest players we've had. It wouldn't surprise me. Actually, Dan, Dan James is probably the only one that comes cl like close to Ronaldo in terms of just pure speed. Um, JR says Neville's... Like, you probably agree with this, G-Wolf. Neville's a better right-back than Dallow, but Dallow was faster. I think he was better and faster. Me, personally. So I would say there must be a trend towards, if we're talking about the 90s and we're talking about current football players now, most current football players, I would say, are quicker and leaner than players used to be. So I would, I would probably say that, I mean, Dallas probably taller as well, isn't he? I would have thought that Dallas would probably be quicker. I don't know. We'll have to do some research and see if we can find out. Rashford is probably must be up there with this current squad though. Probably, but uh... we should probably finish G Wolf. Have you got any <laughs> final final comments on this? We had a, a nice nice chat about the importance of speed in the in the do you, do you think like, seriously do you think Manchester United need to look at improving the speed of players? I think they do. Um and also better that's mainly better players than what we've got like i think overall i don't think um rashford is the person to go forward i think his time is pretty much done at united i think we need to sell him on asap we need to sell on casemiro literally he brings nothing to the table anymore we need to get rid of um Varane. i think it's time for him to go we need to get like you know better better players in those positions um get a better left back get a better probably need a better right back as well it's just so many and then eventually we need to get get the goalkeeper as well <laughs> who do we keep g will just do you want to summarize that because it might be quicker and <laughs> at the moment i will keep um i'll keep hoyland um I will keep uh, Menu, Ganacho, and the rest I will fill in with youth players. And uh, who do you and... say you'd keep again? You'd keep, you'd keep Hoyland. You'd keep... I'll keep Hoyland, keep Kobe Menu, and Ganacho. The rest I will pretty much sell. That's, that's a lean squad, three players. I suggest we play, keep a few more. Literally, I, I would want an absolute overhaul of players. You, you keep him McTominay. I don't think it's happening, but after him, I think he's gone. I <laughs> will keep him as a squad player, but not a starter. Okay, just like I, just like as I will keep um, Maguire. But he is no way starting for me. He is only going to come on in um, cup matches and just like uh, Scott as well in cup matches and for anyone who gets injured. Where do we finish the season, G Wolf? I guess in top four is gone now. Six? Um, Seven? I think that we can points wise it doesn't look good i think that would be sixth but my gut is saying that we finish fifth fifth right, let me just check that's my gut lower. my gut we're 11 point i think we're 10 points behind fifth we're 10 points behind fifth Yep. Six games to go, and you think we're going to pull that back? Yep. I think, yeah. I think you're fine from uh, from here on out. You're going to see uh, oh, Tottenham. Hang on a minute. You're going to see Tottenham. Do the math. There's 18 points to play for, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get eight. We're gonna get. Well, actually, we need to get 11 points more than Spurs because our goal difference is 17 worse. So we need to we need to outperform Spurs by 11 points. 
and Villa, both of them by, or one of them at least, by 11 points in six games. You see. Gee, Wolf. You see. Okay, right. You heard, look, you at, heard that. look at the team. Look at the teams. Look at the teams that, Tot that Tottenham have got to play. You just play Bournemouth, G Wolf. Doesn't matter. We can still improve. Bournemouth for 12. I know we can improve. Okay. Our neck, our fixtures, right? Just before we finish, this is our fixtures we got. We got, okay, Sheffield United. Surely that should be a win. Burnley, Crystal Palace. Burnley could okay. be a win. Crystal Palace could be a put could be a win as well. It could be. They were, were away, so you never know. Then we're playing Arsenal and Newcastle and Brighton to finish. See, I would say that we could possibly draw with Arsenal. We could, but then that's two points dropped on Spurs potentially. It means that we're going to really struggle to the only find thing that is extra eleven. We'll get no points. Yeah. We just discuss if you look like how many points, point, if you look, if you look at the teams that um, Tottenham have got to face, right? You can only pretty much see them getting round. I would say three points. The this rest of them will work. be lost. I don't think this works, Steve. I don't think it's mathematically possible. It is mathematically possible, but it's. It's extreme. You know, when you, um, if you watch an American sports, they'll always have a, a percentage chance of the playoffs at the end of the. But everyone, of the everyone, table. everyone doubts this the like underdog. The, everyone doubts the underdog. My gut is saying that we're finished fifth. Gio says we need a nine data. We need, we need like some, we need something. <laughs> right. We'll see. As I say, don't 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 get too disheartened at the moment, guys. It could happen. Okay. Have faith. <laughs> right, G Wolf. What I'll say is we will we will talk about this in a couple of matches time because if you're right, then fair play. You like you got it right. But people we'll didn't see. think people didn't think, right, that we would get in the top four last season and we was around about i believe that we was around about fifth in that Sorry, in, 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 in last season as well but look where we finished we finished third last season true as i say i don't think that we're going to get in top four i believe fifth is still realistic and to tell you the truth, having getting into an FA Cup final and finishing fifth, it's not great. But to tell you the truth, considering that the season that we've had is a lot better than what we expected. That's true. That's true. But before I go, thanks everyone in the comments for all the comments, questions, and interesting chat we've had recently. And G Wolf, thanks for giving up your time today as well. To the, coming on and doing the, the player ratings and getting involved You're welcome, bro. and we will be like doing a, a ten hog podcast next week because gee wolf you you got some like material to like present to people to try and change their minds so hopefully oh, people yes. like fjt and hopefully people like um um kate can tune in and see if you can change their minds it'd be pretty amazing if you could do that but you, know, you, you got your view you got your points and and you need to stick with what Hold you on, believe put in. Up Kate's good... comment for a minute. Kate's comment. Um, I just want. To, I'll. I'll try and find it. Um, Doug. Yeah, it was a. It was a generous one. Believe me, it was a generous one. It was very generous. I wouldn't have given me personally. I wouldn't have given it. I would have been irate if it. If it. If it came again. If it was against Man United. Which comment are you talking about, G Wolf? Uh, wanna... There's a comment that um, is it Cake or George said? Oh, it's George, not Cake. Okay, is this about a blender? Yeah. Do you want to just address it then? <laughs> yeah, I do really want to address that. Go on then. 
you got more chance of me sticking my head in an oven than sticking that into a blender. That's where my brain is, don't you know? <laughs> okay. I think that's time to wrap up, guys. Thanks for sticking with this. Oh, perhaps Tom, I don't know. I honestly don't know what, what's going on. But apparently there's some facts coming our way. So... <laughs> I've done some colouring in, you're right. Paint by numbers. Don't forget it, but folks. <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be like Benitez's facts, isn't it? I haven't got graphs, but I've just got a few facts about Ten Hag that you guys, I think you should know. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw this and thought, it's like, this is the sums up cake's day. He's eating a jam donut, but they forgot to put the jam in. <laughs> oh, you've been done. Okay, well, so you sure you sure it's a jam donut because Do you know what? I know what to do with that. You obviously bought you the would. wrong donut, mate. You <laughs> didn't buy a jam donut. You just bought a normal donut. But it's okay. You cake. Cake and you're getting what you donut. can do, cake, so yeah. Cake is... cadet? Come on, you should be eating cake. But what he should do is, yeah, right, just get a bit of paper, turn it into a funnel, stick it into the um, donut, and then put the jam in it himself. And then he's got a jam donut. Donut! I hope it's, not, I hope it's a, one of those ring donuts. <laughs> oh, God. I think, I think people have either missed out or just dodged a bullet if they didn't watch the end of this stream. Uh, right, okay. Oh, time, time to go, G Wolf. Um, I think it is to time to go. <laughs> but thanks for that interesting. If, if people like join and watch and think what this is all about, we're uh, talking okay. about rings. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ending the stream, guys. I'll be back next week. <laughs> There'll be a few different things planned. G Wolf will be on at least one because he's oh, got to try dear. and convince. A few people out. Uh, until then, guys, have a, have a good week, a weekend. <laughs> um, George, we're going to do a podcast. We got um, I got a couple of people lined up that might come on for the Ten Hag outside. G was doing the Ten Hag inside. You're welcome to join as a neutral if you want to. Ten Hag um, in all the way, guys. Yeah, we will see. Cheers, guys. See you soon. Uh, G Wolf, I'm looking forward.